Thank you, Lord, as we share God's word from this place. The gospel is propagated to the highways and byways. Jesus' name, souls will be touched, lives will be changed. Jesus' name, amen. Greetings, welcoming everybody to our Thursday Bible study in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a privilege to be here listening to God's Word. I'm doing the part two of the teaching, Jesus has answers to all circumstances of life. And we're going to look at the part three and uh, possibly might have uh, part two and possibly we might have part three. So we're going to read from the gospel according to St. Mark chapter five and I'll be reading from verse one onwards. This is how the Bible reads in the King James Version. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of Gadrenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwellings among the tombs. No man could find, bind him, no, not with chains, because he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain, in tombs, crying and cutting himself. And when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Last week, we looked at a few of the principles that are prevalent in the teaching and we would continue with that. The Bible says, and they came over unto the other side of the sea. I would like to, first of all, emphasize the first principle over here is whatever Jesus said, it came to pass. It says, they came over unto the other side. This evening... The first thing that we can take as a learning or a principle of life is what Jesus says will come to pass. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, I'm coming back soon. You and I can be assured that he's coming back soon indeed. Now it says, Jesus had said, let us go to the other side. Which means it was not just, just Jesus who was going to cross over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, but his disciples too. Which means when you are part of Jesus and you are part of him, everything he says will not only happen to him and also for you. Jesus said, Verily I say to you, the works that I do, not only will you do, those who believe in me, but also you shall do greater works. Which means we have this confidence that Jesus takes you and me into confidence into everything he does. Which means you are a part of it, you are a party to it, and you shall see that happen. They came over to the other side. I would appreciate if those lines are muted. Thank you very much. Amen. So the first thing, Jesus came to the other side. Now, Jesus had kept his purpose of going to the other side as a mystery. He didn't want to tell them, but he knew it. The second principle that we can see over here is that the journey that we take with Jesus is a journey of purpose. When Jesus tells you to go somewhere or do something, there is a purpose and there is a mission. A life that is with meaning and purpose is a life with Jesus Christ. 
So when they go to the other side, what they come across is this scene that he was come over the ship immediately. There met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit. So you can see that Jesus knew what he was doing. Jesus knew he was on a mission. And Jesus knew who he was going to meet. Another principle that we can learn is Jesus is an all-knowing God. He knows everything. He knows where the need is most, where it's most necessary, or where the need is most. That's where Jesus is. Here we can see this man who came out of the tomb, when he came out of the ship, immediately there met him of the, out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Who would want to be around someone who lives in graves or graveyards? Yet, Jesus came to meet this man who was abandoned. For a moment, I want you to Take your attention to a scenario where someone has been abandoned. Abandoned by friends, abandoned by family, abandoned by anybody. Left to themselves. By the way, they did not have any telephonic system or cell phone or text messages or social media through which you can let them know, hey, here's this guy in the tomb. He has these unclean spirits. He's chained. Can you come and help him? No, there is no communication whatsoever for this person to reach out to Jesus. Yet, you have to realize that Jesus cares and hears everything that is going on. He understood or he knew there was a prayer this man prayed. It is not there in the Bible. Yet, he heard the cry of this man because the Bible says immediately that man came out of the tomb and came before Jesus, met Jesus. Which means that man recognized his answer. An interesting thing that you can see over there is he met with his answer. There are various other aspects that I would like to deal with, yet I wanted to bring over here is he did not delay or he did not doubt who this person is, but he ran to meet Jesus. That is one of the first steps of faith that we have to practice in our life is we run to Jesus. This evening I want to ask to you, a question, do you run to Jesus? It says immediately, which means he did not even have an afterthought. He did not think, okay, well, let me look at him from top to bottom and make sure is he the person. There was an inner knowing in this man, which you can see from his act. Because faith involves actions, steps of faith. And his first step of faith was to go and meet Jesus. And he recognized Jesus. Because in the, in the following verses you will see that. And now it describes his condition. We talked about the first principle is that promised that what Jesus says will come to pass in your life. I want to take you to take a challenge this evening to take any scripture from the Bible and begin to believe. And I believe that will come to pass in your life. In, in the due season, you will see that come to pass in your life. The Bible says don't grow weary in the work of love. You know, Whatever you sow, you shall reap. 
If you are going to sow the eternal seed of God's word in your life, you will indeed reap the seed of God in your life. So, here you see that this person met Jesus. And the next thing is, it describes the condition of this man. It describes a need in human life. It starts saying, first of all, talking about where this person lived. He lived in tomb, which means that is his dwelling place. That is his address. With an unclean spirit. He had an unclean spirit in him. And... He had his dwellings among the tombs, among where the dead are. And it says no man could bind him nor chain him. It's because he's full of these unclean spirits and because he had been often bound with fetters and chains and chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. He could not be tamed because he was controlled by these demonic spirits. So because he was controlled by these demonic spirits, he was untamable. It also speaks about some situations that we come across. I want to promise you this evening, in the light of the scriptures that we are reading, whatever is brought to Jesus... Jesus has the capacity to handle it. Whatever your situation you are going through, Jesus has the capacity to take care of that problem. So you see over here, this unclean man with unclean spirit, he is there, and as he is over there, he is living in a deplorable condition. He is chained and yet he is able to he 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 cannot be chained or tamed because the strength those demonic spirits have give him power that he is able to break all those metallic chains he is in an untamable condition and then always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones he was in a very sad, bad, worse, miserable, deplorable. You can use any kind of synonyms to, or adjectives to describe his condition. Circumstances are real, but circumstances will also have an expiry date. It says, when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Very, very important. One of the keys to seeing miracles in your life is you worship Jesus. The Bible says there is no other name that is given among men whereby we must be saved. It is the name about the earth and beneath the earth that is the name of Jesus the first step towards experiencing miracle I already said one is recognizing who Jesus is second is to worship him he worshipped him which means in order to worship he knew who Jesus was So he had, he had an inner knowing in him that who Jesus was because the moment he saw, he saw help in Jesus. He saw in him one who could help him. And he recognized and he honored him. Honor is so important. Many times people forget to give honor that is due unto God. They tend not to give honor. They tend to 
forget giving honor. Honor is the beginning to see miracles, honor and worship. And worship is in a way in which that honor is expressed. The Bible says he ran from afar off and worshipped him. Which means there was faith, there was worship. Some of the principles that we can see over here is faith that is put into action. And in that action there is worship. And the next thing it says, he cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. Now, you have to realize that this man is speaking. There's, there's, there, there are the demons also speaking. But this is for sure this man speaking. Why he is saying that is because he recognizes who Jesus is. The next thing is, for he said unto him, Come out of the man that unclean spirit. So there is a distinction between the spirit that is resident in this man and this man. And Jesus spoke to the spirit. Our fight is not with flesh and blood. Our fight is with spirits. For we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and all those things that are in high places. That's where our fight is. And Jesus distinguished with the person and the demon, the unclean spirit that was resident. Now Jesus is speaking to the demon and he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is Legion. For we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. When the demons saw, they trembled. Another principle is the moments the demons or the demonic forces see the presence of Jesus, the power of Jesus, they tremble. They recognize, the Bible says in the book of James, the demons also shudder and believe that there is God. They recognize that. And they also recognize the presence of God in a person. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea there about 2,000 were choked in the sea and when they fed when they that fed the swine and told into in the city and in the country they went out to see what was done and they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and the legion uh, had and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind they were afraid and they saw it and told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. They began to pray to him, depart out of their course. And when he was come into the ship, he, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, saith unto him, Go home to thy friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and had compassion on thee. He departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. Powerful. Jesus goes for the nine, leaves the 99 and goes for the one we can see over there. He cares for each person. Every person is important to him. You are precious. You are valuable. You are honorable. You see the ministry of Jesus the moment Jesus spoke those demons left. 
You see the authority of Jesus over every demonic powers. And that could give us confidence and courage and faith that no power, no hell, no demon can stand against us. You also see that how the life of a person is changed when Jesus comes into his life. The Bible says he's in his right mind and he's clothed. Imagine those people of the town of Decapolis, of that, because that's the Gentile na uh, nations. They were not Jewish people who lived over there. Imagine what a testimony over there. Oh, I know that guy. You know, he used to live in tombs. I know his family. I know how his life was, and now he's in his right mind. There's an old hymn that says, What a change in my soul since Jesus came into my heart. This evening, Jesus wants to let you know he's able to change any situation in your life. No matter how difficult it is. Is it demonic possession? Is it sickness? Is it something else that you are struggling with? Jesus has the answer to that problem. You can see how demons tremble before him. So when you bring your problem to Jesus, every problem will tremble and shake and shiver. Jesus brings testimony in your life. A testimony first to your own family. Because he was abandoned by his family and his friends, Jesus considered it so important that let him first find testimony in his own home. We are ready to give testimony to the world, which is fine. You know, I'm not against that. But let us find first testimony with those whom we are known by. Oh, I know you. I know how your life is. Your life is horrible, deplorable. Yet, when change comes in our lives through Jesus Christ, the first people that we need to go to is our own, our blood relations, our friends, our families, our neighbors, because they know us, because there is a message that needs to be spoken to these people that what Jesus has done. They are going to be amazed, and that is going to draw them to Christ. There is an evangelistic thrust over there is every miracle that Jesus does in your life brings miracle. It changes a life and it also changes other people's lives. We are called to share our testimony. We are not called to pack our testimony like a gift wrapper and keep it there. We have to open that box and tell it to other people what Lord has done. Imagine if you received a nice gift, won't you go and tell, show it to your friends and families? And uh, here the good thing is, Jesus says, this gift is not just for this person. This is also for you if you will come to me. So we should go and tell to others. Jesus gave him a mission. No, I don't want you to come with me. Oh, Jesus, I want to come. No, 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 no. no. I've got a mission for you, son. I want you to go out there and tell to the world that who Jesus is. Go and tell your testimony to the world. The Bible says, you shall be my witness. Jesus came into this world for sinners. Christ died for the sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This evening, are you going to take that challenge to go and tell your story of what Jesus has done in your life? Today is the moment. Tomorrow we don't have. Have you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life? You can put it off. You can say, oh, well, I don't believe it. But tomorrow, when you stand before the judgment seat of God, the Bible says, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life shall be thrown into lake of fire. I have a responsibility to tell this to you because tomorrow, when I stand before God, I have this confidence that I did what I was told to do. We'll all stand before Jesus one day. Jesus is on a mission. And his mission continues. His mission continues. The Bible says then he came to the other side. What a change came into this li man's life. No more living in tomb. No more cutting his body. No more naked. 
No more crying and weeping. No more sorrow. Weeping may endure for a night. What a change Jesus brings. Encounter with Jesus will change your life. This evening someone is listening to me. Come to Jesus as you are. An encounter with Jesus will change your life for good. If time permits, I would like to continue for a few more minutes. Or maybe I'll just keep it for the next time, the third session, the third part of Jesus' answers to all circumstances of life. There we we'll look at two daughters with situations that are apart. One who is suffering for 12 years and one who lived a good life for 12 years has come to an abrupt end. And how Jesus ministers to both those daughters of God in a very special way. This evening's teaching is closing over here saying, whatever his word he speaks will come to pass in your life. The word of Jesus will come to pass. His promises are sure and amen. He never fails. He never lies. It will come to pass in your life. Jesus knows what you are going through and he has answers for that. An encounter with Jesus will change all your life. The man was naked. He was cutting his body. He, he, could not, he was untamable. Now his life is a life of meaning and purpose. Now he's going out there and telling to the world what God has done. Go and tell your family. Go and tell your family of what God has done in your life. If anybody at the sound of my voice are hearing this word, come to Jesus. Jesus, the Savior of the world, Jesus died on the cross, shed his last drop of blood through the shedding of his blood. There is forgiveness of sin. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. He was nailed on the cross for your sin and my sin. And through his death, burial and resurrection, there is life. And through his life we live. And through his death, he destroyed death, hell and Hades. He took the power of keys of death and Hades and hell and gives us eternal life. Anybody hearing under the sound of my voice, I want to say to you this evening, come to Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the life. Jesus is the truth. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus is the way. And Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. Jesus has answers to all the circumstances of your life. I want to say this evening, Jesus is always constant no matter what you go through. There is an expiry date. Some of you may be entering into one, some in the middle of one, some may be coming out of one. I tell you, I promise you, these troubles of this life will end. But Jesus is constant. He said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. Would you give your life to Jesus? Jesus, this word was sown in this ground, Lord. I pray that, Lord, it has fallen on good grounds, Lord. Some have heard the word of God, and Lord, let this word bring forth much fruit. Your word will not return void. Let it accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. Thank you, Jesus. I praise you and thank you, God. Lord, many will come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. A day is coming. We'll all stand before the judgment seat of God. Those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire. I pray that, Lord, those who have heard under the sound of my voice will commit to give their life to Christ, Lord, this evening. I praise you. I thank you, God. Thank you, God, for answering our prayer. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to minister the word, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless all those who are on the line, Lord, and meet all their needs, Lord, and all those who are hearing, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.